Hi, how you doing? It's Jeff Sinker back again with another Iron Maiden track. And in fact, this is from the Iron Maiden album, and of course, it's called Sanctuary. From my understanding, this is possibly the first song that was ever written by Iron Maiden. I'm just checking Wikipedia, looking through files, and this is the way I'm getting it. Very, very easy to play. I would say, in all of the songs that I've played by Iron Maiden, this is probably the easiest one to play. So if you are a beginner and you just want to crank out some Maiden, this is definitely the one. Now I'm going to show you how to play all of the parts in this lesson. We're going to go through it, all of the rhythm guitar parts, which are, as I said, very easy to play. At the end of the video, I am going to show you some ideas of how you can solo over this track. It is relatively easy to play the solos over this. Now, I'm not doing the set solo. What I'm doing, I'm throwing it open and letting you see some of the ways that you can play over the top of that. So I thought that would be a little bit different and a little bit more fun. Uh, at the end of the video, I've got an idea as well, uh, things that we can do just to move forward uh, with this channel uh, concerning this song. So uh, do take it to the end if you can, and uh, let me know your thoughts and my suggestions. If this is your first time to the channel, well, hi, how are you doing? It's great to see you. If you've come here because you're a Maiden fan, then really this is the place to be if you want to learn Iron Maiden. Got over 60, headed towards 70 now, songs, lessons by Maiden. So why not now click on that button? Click on the bell, and that way you'll be notified whenever I'm putting any new Maiden songs out there. And of course, you'll have my undying gratitude for your support for the channel. Anyway, enough of my plugs. Let's get into this and let me show you how to play Sanctuary. So don't go away. Preview. Let me just play through that opening riff, then I'll break it down for you. really is quite simple this one. We're just going to play a D5 and I'm using the open string, I'm playing open D and um, 2 on the G and we're going to play that twice. Now I do an up and down, so an alternating picking on that. Then I'm going to play the 3 on the A and then back to another on the D so I get then I do an alternating pick on the open A on the open A to three on the A. So I'm doing a down up, and then a repeat. That's it. Quite simple. Now the way it starts off, you're going to uh, the first guitar which on the record is panned heavily to one side and laid back off the mix. Now that guitar is going to play this riff 12 times. The guitar that is in the mix right in the center, which I'm not too sure if it's Dave Murray or Dennis Strutt, I can't tell. I've looked at some videos, I can't tell who is the opening guitarist on this, one or the other. But the second guitar starts after two bars of playing that riff. So first one is going to play 12 times, second guitar is going to play 10 times. So that is played through the verse section, so after 12 times then we play this part. So what I'm playing there, I'm just on an F5 and I'm playing so it's F5, two Fs, to the G5, play the same rhythm. And then back to the riff. And then back to. Finishing on an A5, and you're gonna hold that for two bars. And then it goes back to. Again, same thing, you're going to play that through, 
First guitar starts off two bars and then all of the guitars play through for a further 10 bars. Of course, going back to that bridge section at the end of that. Right, let's look at the next section. We're playing there, we're starting it off on an A5 and we're going to play. That's your rhythm that you're going to be playing throughout this section. Then we change to a G5. Same thing. Back to the A. Then to a D. Now you can even play your D here. You can play it up here. One guitar does one, one does the other. So it's entirely up to you what you want to play. So that section. Okay, then we go back and repeat. So you could do variation on D, whichever way you wanted. It goes back to this. Then we've got this part. So while I'm playing there, what I'm doing, I'm playing it as though I'm playing an E5 to a D5, but I'm not playing it as a five chord, I'm just playing it across the D, G and B string on ninth fret, going to seventh fret. So it's E, D, E, two on the D, back to the E, back to the D. Then we move down and we're gonna play across seven and five. And then we go down to the four, so that last one. Finishes on an A5. We hold that for one bar. And then we're into the first solo. And the rhythm that we're playing over that first solo is the same as the verse. Let's play it over the first solo. Right, let's move on. Let's see what we do when we come out of the solo sections. So let me just play through the interlude that comes out of the second solo. So it goes like this. Really, all we're doing, we're playing a D sus four octave position. So the first one I'm starting off, when I'm playing with a D sus four, we're holding down. If you uh, play a D chord, but across the 14 on the G, 15 on the B, and 14 on the high E, and drop your little finger on the 15, so we get a D sus four. So I'm playing 15. <laughs> down through uh, 15 on the B and 14 on the G. Lift my little finger, so I'm playing 13, as uh, 14, 15, 14. I'll play it again. Then we move down and we play the same thing, but obviously 12 frets lower, so we're playing it across three, three and two. So we go, lift the finger up, back up, So that's the first part. Then we've got this line, which is 10 on the D, cross over to the G and I'm doing seven, nine. And then on the B string, I'm doing seven, eight, 10. And repeat that four times. That's both of the interludes. Now we've got a slightly different rhythmic feel on this, so let's just go and have a look at that now. So let me just play that section through for you. What 
I'm playing that, I'm doing a C5 first and I'm playing this rhythm. Down, so I move my that first finger down to the two. Or to a D5, same rhythm. Back down to that C5, but with the second, with the first finger down on the second fret, bringing it back in. Down. And then to D5. So slowly. We play that twice, then we go back into the bridge section, which we normally play at the end of the verse. And from that part, we go back to another verse section, we play all the way through the verse section and then into the chorus. Coming out of the chorus, which will end on the... Um, ends on the A, we've got a bar, and then we are into the outro section, which goes like this. I'm playing there, I am playing the first one is on the G string and it is 10, 9, 10, 9. Finishing on the 9. Now that's the pattern you're going to play through on each one of these movements that we're going to play. Now from there I cross over to the B string and I'm playing across 10 and the 8. So it's Move up, and I'm doing a cross 11 and 10 again on the B string. Move up, and this is 13 and 11 on the B. Move across to the E string, and it is 10 and 8. Then it's 12 and 10. And then 13 and 12. And the final one doesn't go back to the 12, so you get and that is the end of the song. Now what I thought I'd do is just talk about some little ideas that you can use for soloing over this. Instead of just going through a dedicated solo and playing all that, I just thought I'd just break down some little licks that have been played here. Uh, but the main thing here, you can pretty much have some fun and play what you want because he's just playing across A minor pentatonic in the first solo, and I think this is Denny Stratton who's playing this one, because the other solo sounds a little bit more like Dave Murray. But the solo, uh, if you want, you can open it up the same way, is just playing a tremolo uh, across on third position A minor pentatonic, which by the way, is going to be 10, 12 on the E, 12 on the A, 10, 12 on the D, and then you're playing 9, 12 on the G, and then move forward, you've got 10, 13 on the B, and then 10, 12 on the high E. But he starts off that, there, just brings that in. Then he's got this typical bluesy pattern that he's playing, which is across 12th fret on the G, and then 10, 13, pulling off to the 10 again. So you can see a very relatively simple pentatonic line that you can play over that. Then he moves up into fourth position, minor pentatonic, which uh, if we start for the A string is A, 12 to 15 and then 12 to 14 on the D and the G. Moving forward to 13, 15 on the B string, and then 12 to 15 on the high E string. Now his line is just moving up the pentatonic from the G string. So. But you can... 
all variations that you can play over the top, but he's just using that five position. Now, sorry, in the four position. Now he also does a, kind of a nice little scale, uh, kind of a rundown. And again, I'm just taking, I'm doing this 12, 15, uh, back to the 12, then I cross over and I hit the 15 on the B. Back to the 12. And then running down for 15, 14. Onto the 14 on the G. But pretty much anything's going to work there. You know, you can get... Fancy being adventurous. Oh. You see, they all work. Just moving around that pentatonic scale. Then he's going to move up to a 19th fret on the B and the high E string. And what he's doing, he's anchoring down 19 on the E string. And then he's just bending up the 19 on the B, on the B string. <laughs> And that holds for two bars, so you can just play through that. That's a relatively easy one to get into. Then he's got a 14 on the G, 14 on the B, 14 on the high E. And he's going one, two, three, but tremolo. Finishing on the 15. Oh, a little lick there. And then he's going to be moving up into what could be seen as first position minor pentatonic, up on that 17th fret, because he's going to feed into going up to that 20, so you've got there a 17, 19, and go into the... Oh, 17, 20, should I say, 17, 20, 17, 20. So, what I'm really trying to get at here, uh, this is a fun song where you can do some experimentation on your soloing and still make it sound pretty cool and very similar to what was going on in the record. Now, let's move on to the next solo, which is, I'm, I'm positive this is Dave Murray's. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just the whole way that he is approaching this solo. So let's just have a look at some ideas from that one. Now, this solo is played over E minor pentatonic, and he's doing and this uh, movement across uh, what will be seen as first position. So I'm playing 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. On the B string, he's doing a trill. Then down to the 14 and then back again on that trill of the 12 and 15. Then he's moving up and he's playing 15, 17 on the B string, pulling in the, uh, what would that be, 16 on the B string. Same thing again. And then he's moving up to the 17 and the 20 on the B string. And uh, you've got this uh, little line that he's playing. So when I'm playing there, I'm playing a 20, and then pulling up. Which is 17, 20, 17. And then he does a 20. 20 across the top E. Full tone bend on the 20. That pretty much takes you out of that solo. So a lot of this is just doing these typical Dave Murray. But of course, if you stick to E minor pentatonic, pretty much play whatever you want over the top of that. Well, I just thought I'd throw them in. Uh, what I might be interested in doing is putting up the backing track. And then if anybody's interested, do let me know. What we could do is you could record yourself playing over these solos. And uh, we could kind of put them out there, a little bit of discussion, and you can show me your playing. Because obviously, you know, you're all seeing me play. It'd be great to actually see what you're doing. And uh, just to see what levels you're at. And just everybody have a bit of fun. 
let me know if that would be something you'd be interested in doing anyway. But we have covered all of the songs. You can see, I would say this is probably the easiest Iron Maiden song to play. And when I'm checking back on the history of this, I think this was the first Iron Maiden song that was written by the band. Again, if I'm wrong, please let me know. Well, I'm going to let you go. So until the next time, this is Jeff Sinker wishing you well, and I'll speak to you again real soon. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>